Good morning. Uh, let me check. The microphone is on. I guess the sound is coming through. Hi, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. How are you doing today? Happy Friday. I'm mega tired, but I'm very happy. It is Friday after all. Um, yesterday we had a meetup at the office and I was hosting the OWASP community here in Toronto at the Octa office. It was super fun but also meant that I went to bed a little bit later than my usual, uh, which means I'm a little sleepy today. But everything will be fine. The coding will work. Uh, we will have some fun and get things started. So hi, nice to see you. If you're if, if this is your first time joining, welcome. If you're a returning uh, watcher, uh, welcome again. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to see you here. I'm very happy that you joined. Um, so, you know, let me know in chat that you were there. Say hi. Let me know what are your wins for this week. What did you do? What was fun? What was not? You know, uh, the comment sessions are open and I'd love to see uh, that you are there and say hi to you personally. Uh, anyways, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, today we are coding IoT stuff. Yes, a little bit of IoT stuff. Uh, so I have the Badger 2040W, my favorite companion here for this type of streams. Uh, we are going to continue working on the device authorization flow. If you never heard of a device authorization flow and want to learn more about it, let me know. I'd love to explain it to you. Uh, but basically, I've been working on this little project where I want people to be able to log in to the badge and update information that is shown on the display based on their user information. Uh, and to do that, we use device authorization flow. And today, part of the things that I'm going to do is to actually get the login going, you have to access a website. And even though the badge is gray, uh, the screen is very limited. So the way that I thought that would be the easiest way for people to access the website to continue the login would be to have a QR code there. People can scan it and continue the login on their uh, phone. Uh, so that's the thing that I'm going to try to do today, create a QR code and see if that works. Hopefully everything will be fine. <laughs> and I also have an example code that I can use um, to get that going, but let's let's see how how it goes. Um, you know, let me know if this music is too loud, if my voice is too low. Uh, I changed the thing that I use to play music for this stream, so this is brand new software. So I'm testing out with you today, uh, and you know, bear with me when we figure out the kinks uh, in the new configuration, uh, just in case. And let's get some coding done. What do you think about it? Should we get some coding done? Is channel five here for me? And um, I'm ready to get coding done. <laughs> uh, so yeah, let's go, let's do some code. Um, let me bring my camera up. So if you're new here, uh, this is what we're going to do today. So this is Tony, this is my IDE. Um, here to, let me see, this side? Yeah, this side here. Uh, so Tony is the ID that talks to these microcontrollers that um, are Python enabled or micro Python enabled. Uh, it has a special ways to detect those devices. Uh, and here I'm showing you the code that is running on my badge or was running on my badge until it finished uh, and updated that screen over there. So the screen is the one that you see up here on top of my head. Um, and that is showing part of the information that I need to get the device authorization flow going. So as you probably can see, um, there is a link here. This one is not being shown yet in the badge. And I'm going to add that in just so that we can see how that looks like, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be too long. It's going to break the, uh, the formatting. It's not going to look as good. Uh, although I could decrease the font size, I prefer to have something that is easier to read. Um, you know, I wear glasses, so bigger font size is usually helpful for me uh, and maybe some other people as well. And especially if you're doing this at a conference like I usually do, uh, having the bigger font size helps. So I'm going to add another line of code here to print out that URL. Uh, so right now what is being printed out is, so this is printing out to my shell, which is this thing here. So device code successful, that's, we 
got the device code that is the W K G L blah 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 that is showing here is also showing on the badge there as code dot um, column and the device thing uh, which I have what 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 do I print that out I guess is on this part yes so I have a function here that is called draw page and that's what draws the information on the badge so it's using bmap six as a uh, as a font. Um, I'm going to change this to device of C because it's authorization uh, flow just to get that started. And this is the part that is shown on like the black bar on the top of the badge right here. And the other font is using bmap 8, which is just a little bit different, but you know, enough that it has some, some difference. So it shows a text user code received, which is, you know, uh, we got the code. It's always good to tell the user that the code was received and what the code is. I might remove this, but I'm also going to add the URL in here. So I can just copy this line and let me see what the difference is because this one is with it minus three this one is minus 105 which the amount of pixels from the screen so maybe i should have three here as well so i can use the whole full screen but i might need to adjust this because my idea is to use this blank space here to show the qr code so I might want to use this for the beginning as well. well. We'll figure out by the end of the day. And the other thing is you're going to notice we need to tell this display text function the location to put in my text. So like which pixel you should start drawing the text. So the first line is the 28th level of the pixel and within like is the um, within the screen, I guess we have maybe, I don't remember how much, how many pixels, but we have a bunch. And so 28 is the first line after the black bar on top that shows something. Uh, 48 is the second line where we can see the code. And I'm going to increase in 20 here as well to get the third line, which is the example that I have commented here. Um, and I'm going to keep the width as with this and I'm going to change this dictionary is the one that has the information like the link and the code and so instead of user code that is a part of a dictionary that I don't remember which the name what the name is for that field but we're going to figure that out in the documentation that I have uh, so where is my browser hmm. where is my browser here oh yeah here oh look past kids oh by the way uh, i do these live streams for work so part of my day job which is developer advocacy and developer relations is to teach people about identity because i work for outzero and nocta and um we just launched a new playground you can try stuff out so this is past kids playground um you're going to be able to test out past kids in real life with the background the playground once the demo goes live uh, but so far you can learn why past keys are important how you can use past keys what is like the pros and cons of past keys mostly pros right i i hate passwords i probably other people do too but if you want to learn more about past keys this is a great resource i'm going to drop this in, in chat and i forgive me for the people that are watching this on twitter and linkedin uh i can set set send this as a comment in the thread of the stream uh but i'm going to drop in chat for the twitch folks first so give me a second there uh, paste so learnpresskeys.io is our new brand uh tool for you to use you may have also used jwt.io which is also a way for you to learn about json web tokens um so this is kind of like that but for past keys and it looks really cute. So we are going to have like a demo here and you're going to be able to try past keys on the fly on the browser and see how it works and what kind of information you get back once somebody uses a pass, creates a pass, keys, a pass key. 
anyways so you know check it out uh give me feedback if you have any uh if you are you know enjoying this or not join or not enjoying as much uh but in any case check it out it's really fun uh and we just kind of released this this week so brand new you heard here first <laughs> Uh, all jokes aside, uh, let's go to the code. Where was the, what I was going to do? Uh, I think I was going to find a piece of documentation for how the information comes through from device of four. Yes, that's it. Um, and I should have had this open. I guess I closed my tab earlier when I was cleaning stuff out for the stream. So bear with me while I was searching for the information that I need. And... I also need to drop the link in chat in the stream thing for twi uh, Twitter. Oh, hi, learner. How are you? How you doing? Am I live on Twitter? Yes, I'm live on Twitter. Okay. Where is my link? Uh, copy. Nope. Just give me a second, folks. Oh, yes, I don't want to go here. Wrong wrong browser. I have a secondary browser that I use for the, all things is streaming. Um, on the other screen that I have here, which is why I'm looking to the side. Uh, and I'm trying to figure out how to get to my stream on Twitter, which I never know how to do. And I apologize in advance. Oh, found it. Ugh, it took me forever. But anyways, I want to drop the learnpasskids.io uh, website over there so people can, you know, access it. Okay, there you go. Um, so there is a person here, uh, Fubor. <laughs> nice name. And um, hi, Fubor. Nice to see you. Uh, yes, I'm, I work for Odd Zero. I'm a developer advocate at Okta, and my focus is Odd Zero and Python. So, you know, welcome. Uh, nice to meet you. So I'm, I'm I'm guessing by your name that you're a developer. What do you do? What do you develop in? What is your favorite development language, I guess? Uh, yes, I'm going to drop the learnfastkeys.io link here on Twitch again. And I was going to do it on LinkedIn, but for some reason, LinkedIn has not been nice with my streaming. Every time that I access it, I see a, oh, this ended, which has not, because I'm still live, um, which is so weird. But anyways, fingers crossed, everything works. And I might drop the link la there later. Oh, I guess it's live now. It seems like, yeah, let's, let's try commenting now. Okay, there we go. All right, got it, got it there. Okay, perfect. Now let's stop. I may have have you know pass keys enabled for the demo that I'm going to do to use with this thing. Let, let's see if it, that can that can go through. Um, not for the device outflow because I might not need that for for that, but for the website that people can access uh, with the user the user information. Um, they might be able to use passkeys for a login. But anyways, Fubor, I'm doing Kotlin uh, at the moment. Really like this language and a bit of Python to do AI stuff. Oh, nice. So, uh, fun fact, I used to be a data scientist before I joined um, Zero as a developer advocate. So, you know, I used Python for data science and AI and machine learning and why not a long time. Yes, really nice. You know, I haven't tried calling yet, but I heard a lot of calling. A lot of people like seem to like it, which is interesting. Uh, okay, what was doing? Developer outflow. Okay, developer node device outflow. <laughs> uh, let's go to the documentation. Let's see if I have the example of the information we get back in here. So for those who don't know, the device authorization flow was ratified on OAuth 2, which is nice. Uh, and basically it's a flow for you start your device, uh, usually it could be like a smart TV 
or the badger in this case, something that is has an input constraint, um, is hard to type or doesn't have a keyboard built in or something like that. Uh, so for you as a developer to provide a better experience for your user, um, you can use device outflow so they can see a QR code or link to, to go to on that application um, and continue the login flow through their mobile or computer if they have that handy. So very useful. Uh, what I'm trying to do is to recreate that with the badge because the badge doesn't have a keyboard It is even hard to create a keyboard on screen for people to type like the username and password or something like that Okay, so I went through the documentation of device flow. I'm going to actually drop that in here um, In case people want to check it out and There you go Uh -huh. Dropping in all of the places for some reason, Restream, which is I'm using to uh, stream to three places at the same time, the closest I can get to three places at the same time, uh, doesn't let me comment on all of the platforms, only on Twitch. Uh, I guess it is some sort of um, constraint they have. I, I haven't figured out uh, how to fix that if that is a fix, but uh, in any case. Uh, that is the link and part of that documentation is how do you call an API and I guess here we have an example of what you get back All of the steps request device flow and nah, nah, nah. This is the information we sent to the out zero server so that we can get the code. Oh Here's the response. So when we do let me zoom in a little bit. It might be hard to read that if you are on a small screen. I usually watch streams on my uh, phone. Uh, so for me, it's always hard to read people's uh, code. So anyways, when you do the call, you're going to get back an answer. If everything checks out, of course, uh, you're going to get back an answer in containing the device code, which is like an identifier for that device. Uh, you're going to get a user code, which is the code that the user is going to use to actually continue the login process. You get two uh, URIs. One is the standard URIs. So for example, for my case, that is going to be justinporo.us.out0.com slash activate, because I don't have a, a custom domain set up yet. And you also get the URI complete, which is the one that I'm going to be using for the QR code because you need to, if you go to activate and I can show this to you, you're going to have to input the code yourself, but you can also pass the code as part of your URI or URL, depending on how you look at it. Um, so that the user doesn't have to type in the code. They just have to confirm that the code is the same code. Uh, let me show you to you how that actually works. Uh, I can hear myself. I'm hearing myself. Oh, uh, is this, so this is, okay. I know where, uh, let me mute myself. Okay. I guess now it's good. Uh, okay. So this is the link, right? And if I used only to the activate part and I go to my browser here, here's what you're going to see. This is the screen you're going to see that says device device activation as the Azure Shield logo here. I'm going to change that for something that is more um, that is more appropriate to my application later. I I, uh, I can do that in the dashboard for Azure, and then you can enter the code. So what a user would do is they would see this page after clicking on the activate link, and would copy this code and put it in here, right? And then continue to the process. The other side to this is if you already provide the URI with the code in and access that, so that is already the one-time code, which I realized because you know it's already filled and it's going to show that it's invalid because it's already uh, the time for to test it out is very short. So it's already showing like, oh, this is expired. Uh, and, but you could continue with the flow if it was not expired. Anyways, you get the idea. So this is the other part of the information. And finally, how much uh, I think is seconds a code expires in. 
and the interval for you to call the API again, I guess, if I'm not mistaken, to check if the user check uh, logged in. Uh, let's let's check if I'm right for the interval part because I don't remember this. In the case, the interval in seconds, also it was in seconds, both the expires and the interval, which an app should pull the token URL to request the token. Okay, yes, so that's it. So basically what happens is your user has to log in and then your, your application is to check if the user logged in or not. Um, also, you also, you don't want to do that too often, often, uh, so it doesn't break anything or you get like blocked because you are making too many requests, but you know, so that's the information you get back from, uh, odd zero once, uh, you go through the process and of requesting the code. Anyways, let's go. Uh, we don't need this right now. I was running this in my, I don't need this as well. Sorry. I was coding something yesterday and you know, full work. And I left the thing um, open in here. So, okay, what we need, the field we need is the verification URI complete because I want to generate the QR code from that one. Uh, and that's the name that we're going, oh, no, I didn't, I did not copy. Why did I not copy? Copy and paste. Okay, so verification URI complete. Let's try to display that in the device. Let's let's run this script again. And it's running. So it's rebooting my Badger. And it takes a little while to get information back. Hopefully, if I didn't break anything, it's going to work. So it showed here on my terminal, on my shell, the information. You can see the new code. And in the badge up here, also this is not code, this is URL. Uh, you can see the update. So let's let's take a look, a closer look at this. So that is device of the flow, which is the name of the thing that I just changed. User code received. Then we have a line that says code and has the code, CC, QN, blah, blah, blah. And then the third line, which I realized that I didn't change the name of the thing, um, is also showing code, but that is a URL there. And as you can see, it doesn't show everything, which kind of makes sense because it's a very long URL. So with that in mind, um, and if I put, for example, I'm going to show you the thing with the space so that we can have the white space in the end. So if I do this, it's going to crop the information to show within that scope of the size of my screen, I guess. I'm, I'm guessing. I don't remember this anymore. It has been a while since I messed around with the space in the screen. So let's run this again. Let's see the updated version. Yes. So this is actually, what what is this parameter? I don't remember this anymore, which makes sense because, you know, I. I moved this around a little bit before. I'm assuming all of this is going to be up until that point. But since I have something that is bigger, it's going to try to write it anyways. Yep. Uh, that's my guess. So I'm going to make everything like look the same. And I'm stop showing this URL because it doesn't help anybody. I could also break the URL down and to show that on the screen, but I think it's not helpful. So commenting this out and the thing we are going to do is we are going to try to use that URL instead of showing the URL, QR code. Let's, let's get that done. Um, for the people watching so far, so good. Any questions? Uh, let me know. Drop that in chat, you know, uh, say hi. Uh, I love to know that you are there. Um, what else? Okay. Gotcha. So we need the QR code and I do not know how to generate QR codes with Python on my own, but I have another badge, which I don't have it here because I put it away when I was cleaning out my office because I was not using it. Um, that generates QR codes based on a URL. So we're going to sneak peek into that code to, to see if we can copy that for this thing and if it works, right? Um, so speaking of badges, in case you were wondering, um, I have a lab that me and the folks 
uh, the take care of the Python community here at Odd Zero uh, created and reviewed and released and you should check it out so if you are studying your world like you know with a badge and you want to check it out and do it yourself and configure these things uh, you can to you totally can uh, buy a complete kit from Primal Roni uh, and use that tutorial that I shared in chat um, as a starting point so it walks you through the whole badge setup it even shows uh, so this is an example flow of the badge what it is uh, the walk you through Tony which is the ID that uh, I'm using right there that is code for you to download so you don't have to code it yourself if you're not a Python person but you want to try the device I use these badges a lot at events as part of my name tag uh, and I put QR codes in it so that people can easily find the website that I mention a lot in my conversations those kind of things but it also shows how the badge works like what are the buttons what are the connectors that you need uh, if you buy the complete kit it's going to come with a badge uh, the cable to connect that to your computer and a battery pack uh, and even like a linear so you can put that across your uh, neck but anyways it's very fun um, little device uh, check it out so the code that I have here as an example actually have the same kind of code adapted to three different badges so there are badge, badger 2040 which is kind of the same thing without the chip that enables wi-fi badger 2040w or wi-fi which has wi-fi that's the one that i'm using right now because i need wi-fi to actually make the call to websites to get information logging in blah 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 and that is also a Tufty 2040W. And the Tufty 2040W is interesting because it is a colorful screen. Uh, but at the same time, the code that came with the Tufty had a QR code generator. That, that's the one that I'm going to try to use. So I need to figure out what the QR code is because I don't remember anymore. But at the same time, really fun. I guess it's on the main yes I guess it's in the main let's see so this stuff has different stuff because it is a colorful display display and you need to have it connected to a battery for it to work and show information the Badger 2040 W and the Badger 2040 only uh, they have like a sort of a e ink display so you don't have to have the batteries on for it to show information as long as you turn it off with the information you want to keep there, it's going to continue to show that information no matter what. Unless you replug it and change what is being shown. Uh, what is the QR code part? Closes, so nope, 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 nope. I'm not going to go into too deep in the explanation of what this code is doing for the Tufty one because that's not my focus. And, but I want to check because I remember that I saw the part that created the QR code and I want to see if I can find it and if it works like from scratch. Hmm. Where is it? I could probably search it. Yeah, I guess searching is better. Bio true read button down button A. So maybe not main, maybe it's a part of the badge. Retail badge, QR code, yes. Oh, so that is a QR code module. Do I have that in my, uh, in this one? Um, so where is tools, manage packages. QR code. I'm assuming so because both of them use MicroPython, so it should be in there. So we have that QR code image generator. Let's take a look at this. So Python QR code, interesting. I don't know if this is the same one that it is in the TFT. PyPNG, hmm. Copy the image. Okay. I'm going to try to import and see if that works. Um, 
I don't want to install this one from PyPI. So one of the advantages, advantages of using the shell here is that I can code in here and then copy the code that I know is working into the script that I want to have in the badge. So I'm going just to try to see if I can import the QR code thing. I can, so it's, it's available. I'm choosing to trust. Um, okay, where is the part where you defined, define the QR code? So draw badge. So this there's a bunch of you know information hindering on the screen. So this show the QR button on the badge. Measure QR code. Okay, so we need this. Draw QR code. So I guess we need this to functions and I'm not going to copy the show QR code because what I'm going to do is use the same type of engine that I have for showing all the images I think that might be the way to do it maybe I could do show QR code and see if it works yes I'm going to do it on the script <laughs> I, I guess it's better than I start throwing stuff in here and break my script so and I'm also going to import QR code because we need that. Import QR code. So lightest, darkest, um, I guess I'm going to use black and white. Okay, let's get the show QR code function as well. So this and this I can grab from the badge context. So I'm going to copy that from the other script. Uh, I think I can copy import also the height with the weighted height. Then let's try it out. So yeah, 128 pixels, great. Mm -hmm. So this is going to measure, I guess, get the size of the things to, to define the size of the QR code that I need based on the size of the screen. And this is going to create a QR code. So instead of using lightest and darkest, I know I have the pen color somewhere in here for the display. So I get, I'm, I'm assuming Zero is white and 15 is uh, black. That's what I'm assuming. Let's, yeah, yeah, I'm assuming that that's the right. So I need to also define a display when I'm doing that. So this is the display, okay. And what I'm going to do is instead of like changing this code, just, you know, I'm going to do this and I'm going to copy also this and I'm going to copy this part as well. And I'm probably going to import this from, yeah, I'm going to make it a little bit prettier. Uh, so from this, also I'm going to import also this, and I don't remember from tab eight which one is the one that I need to have first. So I'm going to do variables class object after. Okay, we can try to run this, can't we? Does it work? Um. Let's save uh, Raspberry, and the name I want to do is QR code .ui. And okay, let's see if there is anything that is specific to the other badge that I do not. I'm not using. I don't think so, but they work pretty similar one to the other. 
Okay, I need the tax, which is this one. Let's use this one as an example. Height, height, width. Where is left and right top and being defined? Oh, here. The. Okay, keyword text is a thing I need to define as well. Oh, here. Okay. You are text. And let's see if it works. Save. I think I didn't miss anything. I'm going to set this to darkest. Because I only have one type of color anyways. Yeah, let's see. Let's try to run it. It's probably going to blow up in my face. Yep, nothing happened. Oh, yeah, because I did not... Oh, didn't get... So, I implemented the functions, but I didn't call any functions, so I need to call the functions. No, details. <laughs> Show QR. Let's try. Oh, okay. Can convert non type to end. Where? Line 47, which is the first one that calls line 35. Display... Isn't that darkest? I'm very confused. Oh, wait. Okay, got it. So instead of having the display set pen thing here, I'm going to do the value only. All right. All right let's try that again. It didn't break, which is a good sign, but it also didn't update the display, which I think is a me problem. Um, so let's 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 take a look. So this is setting the pen to black, and this is clearing the display. This is set text. I do not have draw QR codes. Is that updating the display once the thing is done? So setting the color, drawing a rectangle, setting the color, and then you're going to draw the stuff, and then. Okay, so I guess we are missing the display update. Um, where is... Yes, that part here. Let's see if we can add that in. I'm going to add this here as the end thing, as the last thing that needs to be done. And let's see if it updates. <gasps> it worked, folks, it worked. We have a QR code. Does that take me to the right place? My worry with QR codes and the badge is basically uh, what happens if the QR code has too much information because you know the display is very limited in space and the amount of pixels it can show. So let's see if it works. Oh my God, it is working. Can I read that? Yeah. Oh, it worked. Can you see that? Oh my God. Okay, so it worked. So, okay, I'm going to show this to you so that you can see that it worked. So this is my phone. Let's see if it focus, if I can hide my face, focus. Look, the QR code worked. Now I just need to figure out how to display the QR code in the screen that I already have without overwriting everything. Okay. So let's figure out this laptop thing, situation. Um, instead of doing left top, left top, left top. Okay, so my idea is to do part of this screen. So maybe divide by four and start on the fourth quadrant. No, maybe divide by three and start the third quadrant. That sounds better. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Okay, but we have the QR code. Worst case scenario, I can show the QR code and then have the display refresh after a certain period of time. Yes, we have a QR code. I'm so excited. <laughs> and why I need this to be happening inside of the other code there, uh, in any case, is because... Okay, so I don't need this part. I need to import the height though. 
but I don't have that yet. So let's add that in here. So this reads the configuration from out zero. This is a very long script. I need to clean stuff up. Uh, see if I can read stuff from somewhere else instead of and call that all the script. I don't know how to do that if, or if I can. I haven't figured that out yet. Maybe it's a nice to have. Okay, so if I run this again, it's going to show the stuff, right? Yes, hopefully, if nothing breaks. Let's see. So we still have the QR codes, it's running, trying to get the code from mod zero. And now it shows me the code, fine. And then we would use this link in order to get stuff done from the QR code side. And then we would show the QR code over there. But I want to have that portion there. I need to calculate the size of that thing. Yes. Let's figure out the size of that space over there. So let's run this again. And what I'm going to try to do is draw a black square on where the QR code should be. I guess that's the easiest way to do this. And I'm assuming that this corresponds to about two thirds of my screen size. One third of my screen size, the left one third of my screen size. If you look at it like this is two thirds and this is one third. Yeah. So let's try to draw that in. Blah, 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 blah. I'm going to first comment this out and I'm going to comment this out and what does get data do? I don't remember anymore. Also, this is their configuration for zero. Fine. Okay. I should probably call this out zero config instead of get data. Yeah. Big out zero and yes, better name, right? What do you think? Is this a better name? I think it is a better name than get data, it's more descriptive, I would say. Okay, all right, so what I want to do, what I want to do, I want to figure out the size, yes. So let's write out what we need to do actually. So I need to draw a black square on the left pointers of the screen. Why? Because this is going to be um, it's the limits, the limits, the limits. I don't know how to write it more. The limits. Limits? Okay. I think my English is mixing with my Portuguese. Is not, this is not how this works. I don't think this is a word. Um, defines is better. The space for the QR code to show. And I'm going to do the QR code showing part as the last thing, because in any case, if for some reason the information I'm displaying on the screen is too big, the QR code can overwrite it. That's my thinking. Does that make sense to you? I think that it kind of works. I think it does. I have, I have no idea. I think it does just because we have two different pens, one that is writing the whites and one that is writing the blacks of the QR code. And because of that, it kind of works because even if we have something that is black and underneath, we're going to pass the white out on top of it, kind of pixel wise, you know? So let's, let's do this. Let's, let's see if we can draw a black, um, thing like we did with the, the top banner. So if we have the top like line, where do I have that there? Let's use that as an example. So this is the header, right? I should probably do this in another script, but anyways, wait, I'm already committed to this. Okay. So I don't need this because I'm not going to write anything, but I do need so I don't need that part because it's the white. 
Why do I do the black part? Mm -hmm. Oh, this is the head tangle. Okay, so head tangle. It starts on the pixel zero zero, which is the top left, top right left. Yeah, top left pixel. It goes from the top left pixel, which is this is X, this is Y, uh, up until the end and goes down twenty. Yes. So this is the orders, right? So X, Y, X, Y. So this is the leftmost and the second X and Y is the rightmost pixel uh, down. All right. Okay. So rectangle X, Y, zero, zero. So if I have my width and my width divided by three is the amount that I want from the left. How do I make this calculation easy? So if I divide by three, I get the size of each panel. And then if I multiply by two, I get the last one. Is that, <laughs> is that, is that what I want to do? Let's see. So divide this by three. This is going to give me the breakdown. So basically 98, 99. I can do 99, I guess. So you're going to have 99, 99, and then one that is smaller. Or I can have 98, 98, and then one that is bigger. Yes. Yes. I think that's what I'm going to do. Just a second, folks. I got a notification that I might need to see right now. Yeah. I think that's what I'm going to do. So the first two parts are going to be 9, 8. And the last part is going to be the left, the whatever is left from pixels. And if I'm not mistaken, this is going to be 100 pixels. Yep. Let's see. 9, 8. Plus 98 is going to be 196, and then yeah, 100 from the thing. Okay, so we can set this as 100. Let's do this without doing math for it because, like, I'm not going to run this on the biggest screen, so I don't have to have that care with you know how the calculations are done. I can just calculate it and say that this is why because reasons. I'm also going to add the documentation. So the leftmost pixel that I want, so I have X is 100. The first one on the top would be zero, but I have the banner there. And I want the QR code to be under the banner. So it would be like the 20th. So this, instead of, this is going to come, I'm going to come with this out. And I'm going to change this. So X, which is a hundred. I close my eyes because I need to visualize what I'm going to do. So a hundred and then it, it, Y is going to be 20. And I want up to the end, which is with it. Yes. And height. I'm assuming that's how. Okay, and I don't need to display text. Let's try running this. Maybe it worked, maybe it won't. You know, we're going to figure out. So it didn't work. Oh, did I not set? Hmm. I know why it didn't work. Is 15 is white and zero is white, 15 is black, right? I don't know anymore. Did I not do this right? Can I draw any rectangle? Oh, I didn't update the. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Stop all horses. What was the thing that I forgot to do? Display update. 
because you have to give the information and then you have to update the display let's see if that's that's why okay all right this is working not as i expected it to but it's working okay so this draw okay uh, maybe i understood all the math wrong So what is my, from badge 2040, what? Come on. Oh my God. Okay. I think my ID froze. <laughs> Fine. Oh, there you go. Yes. Do not try to auto complete stuff on live stream. Yes. I guess it's going now. It's taking forever. It's going to get there eventually. I can even type in my editor. This is how bad this is. Oh, dear lord. Things and joys of live coding, you know? Things just simply don't work out sometimes. But we managed to get the QR code going, so if that is good, I'm happy about that. Uh, now this is just like, you know, icing on the cake if we could get it done to show alongside the other information we already have. Oh my God, I'm going to, wait, I'm going to close this and open it again. Here. I just realized that you're not seeing my screen. Oh. oh my god. Okay, give me a second. That's actually good because I just showed my Slack a little bit and I did not want that to be on the internet all over. Let's go again. Okay, okay. Where is the camera? Oh dear. Better. Yes, here we are. Here we are. Sorry about that. Um, so in just rebooting stuff, just make sure things are working, and I'm going to open the code again. I don't know. I don't know what I. You know. I don't know if you. I know you saw the QR code, because that was the last thing that made me change the screen <laughs> for me. And I apologize in advance if you're catching this recording, or for those that are here now. Sorry, things happen. Uh, but basically what I was going what I was doing while we we're not seeing was um, Getting getting like commenting out this part that goes through getting the code Drawing the page. I also changed the function name from get data to config underline out zero Just because I think it is more descriptive and then I was trying to figure out how to do the thing which is the th that attempt up here so my thinking was if I was the width of my screen is 296 and the height is 128. So my idea was to draw a black, um, what is the name? A black square at the end so that I could see the space where I need to reserve for the QR code. And it's not working. So I'm going to try this again. And I'm going to run this again. And I guess my problem is this thing. So this is all black because the skin is already black. So I need to write to do a white thing. Okay. So this is starting. I'm trying to figure out what I did wrong in my, my math. Do I need to start at the 196? Is that, oh yes, that's why. Okay, so, from badger 2040W. I, I should probably do a drawing of how this thing works because every time that I need to do the screen calculations, I, I do not make it work. Oi, Theo. 
Uh, for those that don't speak Portuguese, a uh, friend that speaks Portuguese just dropped in chat on Twitch. How you doing? <laughs> From badge 24 W, uh, I want the import the width and the height. And so what I did was this is this is the size of my screen, and I want to grab the one third to the right of the screen and my brain was like oh i can just do this divided by three which is going to be 98 point blah 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 and i can have two small portions would be 98 98 and then a bigger portion for the qr code which kind of makes sense and what i did because i'm a dummy <laughs> i did okay so 98 plus 98 is 196 which leaves me with a hundred pixels for the QR code given that we have a hundred pixels for the QR code I need the first pixel on the top to be something and what I did do was okay I'm going to do a hundred because that's the size but that's that's it that's the size it's not the first pixel that I need the first pixel that I need is 196 that will leave me with a hundred after that so let's try to draw this again Okay, there we go. Now we have the white uh, QR code space here. Perfection. That's what I needed. It was so simple. Let's run that again so that I lose that ghost here. Okay, so this is the space that I'm going to draw the QR code. So now we figure out the QR code portion the space, at least for it, which is good. Um and now what we need to do is actually draw the QR code inside that space so let's bring up the QR code oh I just realized oh really I just oh ugh. I'm so I'm so dumb sometimes I already had something for QR codes is that I is that generating your QR code or is that just I'm so, oh God dang it, Jess. If only, if only. So this does exactly what I'm trying to figure out how to do, kind-ish, ish. It's going, yeah, it's the same function that I had there. See? <laughs> okay, but we learned something new today, okay? It's fine, everything's fine. And it draws a QR code. In any case, I would have to adjust this code because I only wanna have one code and I don't wanna read from a file, I wanna read from the data that I have in my script. So it's fine, everything's, everything's perfect. All right. So yeah, zero correspond to white, 15 correspond to black in the pixel. So actually like a turned off pixel, I guess state load QR codes yes oh jeez I forgot that we had that script built in to be honest that's that's why um anyways let's go to um so we already know this so the size of the QR code will be a hundred pixels in okay from badger 2040w I want to import the height and the width again I actually just need the height because I need to make the calculation so height is 128 here height capital height so it's 128 I'm using 20 uh, pixels for the badge information name up top so it will leave me with 108 pixels but I want to have some separation in between the top part and the QR code just to make sure that the QR code is clearly defined so I'm going to count height as a hundred as well the same as the we did so that helps um, So let's try to draw the QR code in that little space. 
and I'm going to add this everything in here. I'm just to uncommenting these things because I want to see the name on up top to be as close as possible to um, whatever we have left. Let's see if it works. Hey, I broke everything. <laughs> I just want to make sure that the code that I have actually works with the thing that I already have in place. And I guess I need this part as well. Um, maybe map gate six, yes. Okay. Let's ident this back, run it again. Okay. Perfect. So that this little space is the space for the QR code. And the font, I think I changed this. This was supposed to be a zero. No, this was, yeah. Okay, perfect. Now it's working. So see there how the rectangle is 100 by 100, but it is glued to the, the top part. Um, so height is actually going to be 28, 28, no, that's uh, here, 28, because I want my QR code to be a square of a hundred pixels by a hundred pixels. Yeah, there we go. Looks nice. I think it looks nice. Do you think it looks nice? Okay. So that's the space for the QR code. Perfect. All right. Defines a square of a hundred by a hundred pixels space for QR code. Now, mind you, the QR code that we generated was bigger. So I need to also double check if this one that is a little bit smaller works with reading the QR code. Okay. And so now we have this, we can, I'm going to pull everything of the QR code down here so that we can start working with that. So that is the space for the QR code. I'm going to leave the update of the display there, but I'm going to double check this information over here. So the size of the QR code, what does that look like in this function? Let's understand a little bit. So measure QR code, uh, gets the width, get the height, module size. Size comes from size. Docker box. So I'm passing along the information. So if I pass along the information for the draw QR code, it should be kind of fine. Yep. So we need the leftmost pixel and the top part, you know, of the pixel. So X, Y, and then how far down it goes. I'm assuming. Yes. So this would be a hundred. This would be 196, which we discovered from drawing that little box. And this should be 28. Let's try to do that instead of changing everything. So left is 196. Top is 28. Height is going to be height. And code is going to be the code. Let's run this one. Oh, see? But it's not showing everything because the QR code is too big. Oh my God. How can I generate a QR code that is a little bit smaller? That's the question. And it's almost 11.10 for me. 
so I'm going to give it like more maybe 20 minutes and after the 20 minutes if we have not figured out I'm already happy that we kind of figure out how to draw a QR code on that space so I will make a note for us to continue from there if that's the case so draw QR code where do I generate the measure QR code so this is the text can I generate a smaller QR code So this is a text. Hmm. I might not be able to do what I want to do. I might need to just... <laughs> Instead of doing the 28, start on the beginning and just have the top banner be a little bit smaller. Yeah. I think that will be easier in the longer run and then we can figure out a better way to show that QR code. Can I print module size? I like this song. Let's run again. Three. This module size makes no sense to me whatsoever. We're not even using in, in anything in here, at least not that I can tell. that for the rectangle display and display rectangle so calculations I guess for showing the interesting all right I'm going to leave it there until I figure out what that does okay let's let's go back to starting at zero and since I need I guess one hundred yeah Five. Let's try this instead. Yeah, way too tall. Okay, I can start this a little bit later. Ten, maybe. Yeah. Okay, that 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 looks cute. Does it work? That's the question, isn't it? It works. It's getting me to the page. Great. All right. So I guess this is it. I do not need this. I do not need to print stuff. Okay. I'm going to copy this part and I'm going to update the show QR code function that I had in there. All right. All right. All right. It's, it's going. It's happening, so I'm going to comment out this portion and this portion. And so I need to adjust the rectangle portion for the top bar, but I'm going to make this run first. Also, I need to call this function. Let's see. What? No, thank you. Oh, yes, I didn't define this. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, also, I'm going to do this. 
Okay, let's go. Hopefully, I got. Oh, yeah. QR code that needs to import it. Import QR code. Which is the library. Major QR code isn't defined. Did I forget another function? I could have. So, drop page, login, blah, blah, blah. And yes, I forgot that function for me. Let's grant it. Let's go again. Okay, it's sort of working. I didn't draw the top part of my banner, which is weird. And it could have been me, a me thing. Yes, it could have been a me thing. Let's try to run all of the functions just to see if it works it's going to take a little while because it needs to grab the information yes amount zero and then okay so it's redrawing i don't want to redraw i want to keep everything else and just draw the part of the the part of the rectangle so display rectangle i don't want this one should this probably should do it. Let's see. Oh, it's showing there. It's only okay. So I know what happened. Uh, so first things first. Uh, we need to clear out that part on the top there so that it doesn't have that black top here. Uh, I don't know if the QR code like this works. I'm going to test it out in just a second. But also, we were rewriting this portion, which is the information from the, the code itself. So I don't want to do that. I want to make sure that we have the information there. But what I'm going to do is start to move stuff around a little bit later. Figure out where I'm like emptying out stuff probably should be a best solution yeah I'm going to remove this part because I guess this, this might be it and run that again I um, can remove this part I don't think it's going to change anything in the outcome because I think it's going to still show that the way that it's showing right now. Uh, but you know, we never know. Oh, look, awesome. Did the QR code change? It did. Oh, because I had a blank space, is that why? <gasps> don't, don't. What if I change this to something else? Like, you know, G, 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 T. It changed, it changed, it worked. I'm excited. Are you excited? I'm excited. And then the only part we'll be missing would be... Oh, look at that. Come on. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay, I'm going to move this QR code a little bit down because I think we can actually fit that now here. Um, let's see. Okay. As I had a blank space here and I guess that was changing the way the size of the QR code itself so now the size is 99 okay good so 99 actually fits in 100 pixels which was the first thinking that we had I had uh, I, I don't know why I do the program oh hi Roland how are you um, glad you joined. Uh, we are in like 12 minutes away of closing the stream today, but I hope you can join next week again, uh, where we're probably going to finalize the whole process that we, with the login stuff. So I'm going to change this back to 196. And 
I think the height used to work. I'm going to do 24 just for good measure. Let's see. The QR code is working. Oh, that's awesome. I mean, it's Friday, you know, it's very, it's very good to do great on Fridays. <laughs> Okay, so it's showing the QR code. Oh, it's showing the QR code and it fits. Oh, look at that. I'm so proud. Okay, so now a good a good thing that we should probably do would be to define a calculation so that um, if the QR code size changes, and we will depending on your tenant name, because for example, my tenant, tenant name is just temporal. But I know a friend that has like shorter ones and that will change the size of the QR code, the resulting QR code. But at the same time, I, this works for now and I guess this is fine. We can figure out that to, to make it more pretty, I would say, because it can center the information later. So let's make sure that this is integrated with the things, um, I guess, next, next week. Um, but so far, so good. And what I'm going to change is just the QR code tax part and move this into the part of the code that already does other stuff. Um, this should be data. Yes, we already have data. So data, and I want the verification, verification um, URI complete. Oops and let's run this again and then the qr code will generate according to the uri that i get here okay so we have that here that code which is kl something something i'm going to grab my cam my phone camera and see if that can read that qr code as expected wait okay got it Ah, uh, let's go. Oh my dear. Okay. Oh, look, it worked. It worked. I can see the code is there. I can confirm. Oh my God. <laughs> yes. Okay. Just going to show it to you. Look, look at this. Um, can you see it? It's showing the code and they're asking me to confirm the code that the code is there. And I can confirm it is that code. <laughs> oh, I'm so proud. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> Isn't it great that things work? <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> This is as close to magic as I can get, and I think it's pretty awesome. <laughs> oh, yay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, I cannot stop laughing. <laughs> okay, I'm going to move the variables that I'm using <laughs> upwards. Um, and... Um, <laughs> And instead of using QR code tags, I'm going to pass data over there. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Oh, come on. I'm so proud. <laughs> oh, this is so much fun. Um, QR text is going to become this. And our text and I'm going to add uh, data as part of the the call of the function okay I'm going to move this up a little bit okay okay I have a display update here so I probably cannot do this right now I can do this after the fact so I can probably do the draw page function, be the one that also draws the QR code as well. So I'm going to move stuff here. Um, moving this into here, remove the extra update and this part. 
and I'm going to comment out saying that this portion um, draws QR code from um, your eye. Um, so I had the function. What was the name of the function? I guess it was draw QR code. Yep. This one. I don't think I have the function anymore, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> My sister just dropped in chat. Hi. <laughs> yeah, it's very magical. I agree with you 100%. But you know, I'm biased. <laughs> yes, this is the function that I just uh, removed. Okay, so I already have data and data is in here as well. QR code, QR code. So, so this is actually the data. What is the name? Verification URI complete. Yay. Shouldn't you be working? What are you doing here? <laughs> Um, so my little sister is in chat. Everybody say hi to my little sister. Hi. <laughs> uh, thanks for stopping by, by the way. Miss you. Uh, okay. So data, blah, blah, blah. Let's see if this is still works and I'm going to remove this part. And this should stop the screen for doing an update and with the blank space for the QR code and then doing an update for showing the QR code. Uh, let's go yeah see it works let's test it out again and it's showing up yay <laughs> I'm going to be so impressed every time this works <laughs> okay uh, anyways thanks for stopping by all right Okay, so we get the QR code working, um, which is good. We should probably have add a message for the users to scan the QR code and confirm. Yes, that's what I want to do. So I'm going to show you to you what would happen if we do confirm. So I'm going to run this again so I can get a new code just in case because I was talking and I don't know how long it has been if that code still uh, works or not. Uh, but I want to show it to you. And let's go and so this is the device confirmation that was showing on my mobile uh so please confirm that this code is displayed on your badger device off and it does is k p h j um dash b x t b yes that's the one confirm welcome log into justin for to continue to badger device off which is great um give me a second i need to grab my uh my password for this website because I don't have known password uh, logins uh, in there still. Give me a second. Um, I should have a screen on my screen setup that is like grabbing passwords or grabbing secrets that I can use, you know? Okay. All right. Okay. I got this now going back to the code ah, look at that so here's in my one password I'm going to copy the email so I don't have to type it in and I'm going to copy the password as well so I can put that in here and continue congratulations you are all set your device is not connected okay perfect and so this would be the screen in the process that people would see once they go through the logging process for the device now what is missing from this thing to be completely done after i show the qr code i should be pulling the endpoint to see if the user logged in and get back information from the user and that's the part that is missing and that we're going to be working in next week because that's all the time that i had for today i'm so glad everybody joined um 
great to see you all here and I'm very happy that you worked and you can show the QR code now. So I'm very proud of that. Um, if you like this or if you have any questions, you know, dropping me a message on any of my socials, by the way, for those, um, that are on Twitch, if you go, um, into the chat and use the comments, like, um, exclamation point socials. And I cannot type for myself socials. You should get a link for my social connections. For the people that are not on Twitch, I'm going to drop that in chat so you can find me easily. Uh, that is uh, all my social profiles from all the social network that I have um, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, TikTok, whatever you name it, is linked there even github and so on so if you need anything from me if you need to reach out to me if you have any questions uh go check it out and finally thank you so much for joining everybody it was really nice to see you all here um kisses kisses see you again next week and where we're going to fin finalize this process and continue with the login and show the user information on the badge after login okay um going to drop my see you soon be right back a uh, screen and then do a raid for the people on Twitch. So stick around if you're on Twitch so we can go visit another developer in a little while. Bye.